That was pretty quiet. I hope the volume are the microphone picked you up. Can you guys add subtract fractions? Yes. Okie dokie. Um, I'm going to skip down to number three. A denominator is the bottom number of a fraction. No kidding, right? Yes. But the blue part is the most important. Why is this important? Or actually, not why is this important? Can you guys read this to me in the count of three? So we're talking about a denominator. One, two, three. First thing you look at when adding and subtracting fractions. When adding and subtracting fractions, you got to look at the denominator. And the reason we look at the denominator is why. Why do we look at the denominator first? I'm up here. I'm up here. I'm up here. Somebody tell me, why do we look at the denominators first? Ashton. To know, you have to figure out if they're the same or not. Can you add or subtract fractions if the denominators are different? No. So they have to be the same. Okay, so we're going to go down, 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 down to number two. And look at number six. Number six is one-seventh plus three-seventh. Are the denominators the exact same? Yes. Yeah. So all we do is add then, right? Yeah. And we only add the numerators. The numerator. So what's one plus three? Four. So our answer is four-sevenths. Yes, no? Yes. Okay. On number seven, though, we, the problem was two fifths plus one seventh. Are the denominators the same? No. So after we, what do we, what do we say we do? We light, light up the denominators. So after we light up the denominators, we realized they were different. We needed to find what? Common, common denominator. What's another name for a common denominator? Common and five and seven have a common multiple or a common denominator of. And after we have 35 written down, we make our, and then you figure out what the numerators are, right? Yeah. And you guys came up with 14 and 5. So, all done. Denominators are the same. What's 14 plus 5? 19. What's the denominator? 25. Done. Number 8 is another problem in which if we lay up the denominators, we realize we don't have to do anything because why? They're the same. So you just subtract the numerator 9 and 3 and we got 6. But is six false an acceptable answer? No. What do you have to do? Yeah. Simplify. Good. Number nine is another example of finding common denominators. Awesome. Here is where things get a little bit trickier and longer. We have mixed numbers. Is it okay to calculate with mixed numbers? No. You can't calculate with mixed numbers. Everyone say, I can't calculate. I can't calculate. With mixed numbers. With mixed numbers. You must convert them into what? So once we did that, once we went around the world on both of them and converted them into improper fractions, we then lit up the denominators. And what do we notice about the denominators? Common. Common. That's awesome. So that means you simply have to do the subtraction, right? Yes. And 32 minus 18 is? 14. And the denominator is? Can you leave your answer as 14 over 5? No. Because what kind of fraction is that? You need to turn all improvers into because all answers have to be answered with mixed numbers, right? Yes. Okay. Number 11. The green on number 11 is just showing how many points it was worth. So again, we have a mixed number. We converted it into an improper. But what did you notice when you lit up the denominators? So what do you need to find? Common denominators, right? And then after you find common denominators, you do the multiple. You find your numerators right here. Do your math. You got 82 over 20. Is that acceptable? No. So we convert it to a mixed number, but are 2 and 20 reduced? No. 2 over 20 reduces to what? And then the last one, I'm not going to run through this last one, but remember how we didn't really like the way it was set up? Yeah. Do we have to keep it set up that way? No. So what did we do? You rewrote it so that we could use our organizational method here, right? Questions?